Okay, you clicked on this video because you want to see the single most obscure bit of Mopar trivia, Mopar knowledge to be found any place on the internet. And I'm going to give it to you after I make another confession. So yesterday I confessed about my true intentions for the 4.0 Jeep build, the engine. But today I have to go one step further. And I have to make a confession as to why we do project cars. Why do we build stuff like this and all of the other ones that we've built? And it's not the car. It's not the car. The car itself is not the goal. The car is maybe, you know, the, the finished product is maybe 25% of the reason we do this. It's always cool to build a car. It's always fun to build a car. It's very rewarding to take a pile of, like, inanimate things and assemble them into a functional machine. So there's no denying there's, there's definitely satisfaction there. But from the perspective of this channel, it's only about 25% of it. The vast majority is because it's the single best source of content you can come across. Like, if you're, if you're doing other things, you know, you're, you're, you're mowing your lawn, you're playing with your dogs, you're washing your car, whatever, you're not really immersed in the technical intricacies of machinery. And so you don't get these ideas that lead to good content. And in my, my opinion, good content is stuff that your viewers can use. You know, it's, and a lot of it, the best, of, the best information is always the most obscure information because the easy stuff can always be found in books and manuals and forums and so on and so forth. And so that's why, essentially, that's why we do project cars. Because when we start on a project car, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of content, of video ideas that just jump out at you because, well, you know, whoa, look at this right there. Okay, this, this will make a great video. Somebody's going to get something out of this. So that happened this morning. Out of the blue, wasn't expecting to find a video, but I did. So here's what happened. I'm... Uh, I, I can't spend much time on this car right now. I've, I've got I've got tied up for the next couple of days, and then this week coming up, I've got to I've got to knock a piston into that four liter that's in the Jeep. So I really can't mess around with this car very much this week. But I decided that I was going to knock the uh, cut the the center of the firewall out approximately where it's got to be, and then just start making my measurements and figure out what's how is how is this all going to fit together. So you run into a situation here, and especially with this car, because this car, I have to make mounts for this car for several different engines. And especially with the Jeep, because there's no bolt together stuff, everything has to be fabricated from scratch. So now we have an issue that comes up. Since we have no mounts, since we have no K-frame, you know, your K-frame mounts, nothing that bolts together that'll locate the engine properly in relation to the rear end. Well, how do we determine what the crankshaft center line is supposed to be? Now, the crankshaft center line is very important. Most of you guys, especially if you're into these, these cars, know that Chrysler cars from the era, and probably to this day, but I don't even know what they do today, but Chrysler cars of this era all had the drive lines offset to the passenger side. And the offset varied depending on the year and the model of the car. So. The cars with the least amount of offset are like your early A bodies. And they're about one and a quarter inches offset from the center of the car. The drive lines, the engine transmission and the, and the pinion on the rear end are offset approximately one and a quarter inches to the passenger side. Uh, B bodies, like, like this one over here, your, your, your mid to late 60s B bodies, they're between one and three quarter and one and seven eighths. You get to your later cars, like your E bodies, and they're about two inches offset. So as, as they widened the cars, they moved the motor over a little bit more and a little bit more. And the reason for that is because the cars, these cars are all basically designed around the North American market, and we have left-hand drive. So you've got everything packed into the left side of the car. You get your steering box, you get your master cylinder, you get your clutch linkage if you've got a stick. Um, you've got everything all jammed in there on the driver's side. So to give the driver some more foot room, you know, pe for pedals and whatnot, and to make some room under the hood, they offset the engine, transmission, and pinion, the center of the rear end, to the passenger side. And like I said, it's varying amounts depending on the year. So now let's just say we're doing a situation like this. We have a situation like this where we have no mounts and we got to start from scratch. How can we quickly determine what the proper center line for the crankshaft is on this car if we've eliminated the transmission tunnel so we can't just make a, a mark in the center of the tunnel anymore and 
we don't have any of the stock mounts still in the K-frame. Nothing's going to bolt together. So how do we find the center line on this car where everything's going to line up with the pinion on the rear? Okay, here's your trivia. On all of these cars from this era, the core support is part of the unibody structure. So all of these, all of these panels are all welded together in this unibody. So the frame rails, the firewall, and the core support, the roof, all of that is fit to fixtures on the assembly line. And those fixtures use pins to locate. And if you go over, the, over these cars, you'll find a series of holes, like that one there, okay? Uh, this one here, this one. They're all over the car. You're going to find them on the frame rails. You're going to find them everywhere in the car. And those are the holes that the fixtures use to line everything up while the panels are welded together. Now, there's a bonus hole in there that shows you what the center line of the drive line is and it's found on the core support of these cars so you'll see here's the core support and again it's part of the unibody here's it's welded to the frame rails and you've got these outside holes that hold the fixture this hole right here corresponds with the center line of the pinion so your k-frame has a center hole right here all right but Obviously, if, it, if it's offset, this hole doesn't mean anything to you. So if you look and see, you see this. Let me grab a screwdriver. There's your center between the frame rails. And that hole in the K-frame is indicating that. And then you'll see that this hole right here is offset almost two inches. It's like one and seven eighths to the passenger side. This, if you follow this line straight exactly back, you'll come through the center of the transmission tunnel and you'll come to the center of the pinion. And that is how you locate a drive line that's never been in a car before. Or let's just say you have a drive line that's been in a car, but now you're gonna use solid mounts. You know, you're building a race car, that type of thing. And you're trying to find, you're trying to locate the center. That's how you do it. The rear ends are a little deceptive. So, on the Chrysler cars, it appears that the center chunk, or, or the, the, uh, the center of the rear end, the center section, if you look at the housing, like on an eight and three quarter, it appears that it's exactly in the center, but they're not. They're all offset just a little bit. The main part of the offset is in the ring and the pinion. So the ring gear is more or less centered, and so the back of the housing will be centered, and then the pinion is offset. And the, the offset on the pinion is approximately one and three quarter inches. So to give or take, to get that exactly in line where it's supposed to be on that particular body car, they will move the center of the housing just slightly. Like you'll never pick it up by eye, but, it, but they're not all centered. And like I said, the, the big part of the offset is going to be found in the relationship between the ring and the pinion. And then from the, the pinion gear, you go straight forward and you come to that hole. Told you, right? Mopar trivia, you will not find anywhere on the internet, no matter how hard you look, no matter, because I have, I've looked for it, right? And it's not there. It doesn't exist. But you check your car, you've got one of these cars, A body, B body, E body, any of these cars from this era, and they're all going to have that offset hole. Yeah, I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.